Without further ado, let's open to book of Acts chapter 9 verse 31. Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit they were multiplied. As a Christian church we believe in the Trinity. We believe in one God that shows himself in three persons. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. As when we look at the sun, we see there is the, the sun, we see that also there is a light that comes from the sun and the heat that comes from the sun. So is with the Trinity. You know, God the Father, He is like the, 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 that form of the sun. Jesus is like the light and the Holy Spirit is actually the heat that we feel. God the Father is the one that gives command. Jesus is the one that performs the command. And the Holy Spirit is the one that brings the command to pass. For example, God the Father said, let there be light. Jesus actually performs the command and the Holy Spirit is the one. So Jesus is the one that goes, turns on the switch. And the Holy Spirit is the actual electricity, the light that turns on. And they, they are three distinct persons, but they are in unison and they are together. And we believe in one God. Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is God and we know God the Father. This is what makes us distinct from every other religion and people many times look at Christianity and they say you guys don't believe in one God. You believe in three different gods but it's not true. Just like one person you know you see me as one person but I have a soul, I have a spirit and I have a body and there is only one Vlad but at the same time there is three. The person of the Holy Spirit is who I want to focus on today for the time being that we have. To have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Growing up in the Pentecostal church all my life and us being Assemblies of God church, uh, we believe in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. When I was younger, the Holy Spirit was reduced I was kind of accustomed to that, that the Holy Spirit is a force, the Holy Spirit is a feeling or the Holy Spirit is tongues or the Holy Spirit is when somebody falls down or the Holy Spirit is a prophecy or the Holy Spirit was a tingling feeling that you got, the heat that you feel in your body. But in the Bible we see that Holy Spirit is a lot more than a force. The Holy Spirit is not tongues. It's a gift that He gives us and the Holy Spirit is a distinct person who is separate from the Father and the Son yet they have one vision and one heart and one particular thing. When I married my wife and she we would talk about our experiences with God or she would talk about the experiences she would have with God. She would always differentiate between the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. In my world when I would explain my relationship with God I would always say God's presence, God, Jesus you know but when it comes to like saying that it was the Holy Spirit I've never would uh, differentiate that it was the Holy Spirit that was touching me. The Holy Spirit was kind of like the, 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 this, the this distant cloud for me that nobody will knows a lot about him and unless somebody gets up and talks about the Holy Spirit then for next two days I'm like yes Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is real Vlad, focus on the Holy Spirit. He's real. He wrote the Bible, focus on the Holy Spirit. And after about two days everything we're off to just there's God in heaven and Jesus died for my sins. When it comes to the relationship with the Holy Spirit as a third person of Trinity it was very distant until I started to notice that when my, my wife talks about the experiences she has with God she will always specifically say I felt the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit uh, you know uh, spoke to me. To me it seemed like the Holy Spirit was real to her as a person. Like that He was with her and I knew He was with me but He wasn't real to me like that. I never told her this but after that in my prayer I said, Lord I want to know your Holy Spirit at least a little bit more than my wife. Just one degree Lord. I mean I love my wife and I respect her but Lord I'm the pastor. <laughs> just one degree. I'm not asking for a lot more just one degree. About three and a half years ago that happened to me. In the upstairs office where Martin now sits I remember even the moment I was already for months kind of reading some books uh, doctrine on the Holy Spirit on who the Holy Spirit is as a person different characteristics and I started to hunger to know Him 
it just started like a hunger inside that I just I became more curious I became more aware of the fact that Jesus is in heaven interceding God the Father is in heaven but the Holy Spirit is now on earth and there was a moment in prayer that started this new relationship for me I can't even tell you the song that was playing on my phone and I was I was pacing back and forth in the room I wasn't even praying I was just being aware of the fact the Holy Spirit is in the room and after that moment until now when the word Holy Spirit is spoken to me it's no longer a distant this this uh, abstract little cloud fire dove but it's a real person just like if Jesus would have been here with us today but the Holy Spirit is a real person he's not a force he's a friend he's not a feeling he is a person yes he is God he's not human but he is a real person who has feelings who has a mind and who has a will we were created for intimacy with the Holy Spirit write this down I was created for a relationship with the Holy Spirit in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 it says then the Lord said my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time for they are only mortal flesh in the future their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years God's spirit was deeply fascinated with the earth from the beginning when the world was a chaos the Holy Spirit was here and there came a point you're gonna now learn the secret why you don't live very long God had two options either take his spirit from the earth or let us live shorter since he doesn't want the Holy Spirit to leave the earth he made us leave the earth why because the Holy Spirit could not put up with us that long wonderful you <laughs> this is how great you are <laughs> like man been listening to Jalostin I kind of like believe I'm so amazing that's exactly how amazing we are our behavior sometimes the behavior that humanity had was so bad this tells us the Holy Spirit is a person the Holy Spirit is not a force the wind does not get tired of your behavior the wind will still be the wind the Holy Spirit is not just the wind like a force the Holy Spirit is the person and the behavior of the humans our behavior your behavior was so bad at the grief the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit says you know what I can't take this that long and God says okay we'll cut it down from 960 to 120 and you know and that didn't help until it went from 120 to 70 80 I am not saying the reason why we die early now is because of that but God had to bring down the level why because the Holy I want you to catch this the Holy Spirit he doesn't want to be put up with you he wants to enjoy you imagine this if you would have a person living in your house that is not your spouse but let's say you have a roommate and honestly they just make your life very very painful very painful just grieving just very very painful would you put up with them some of you kicked your children out because you're like listen you rock this boat I'm gonna throw you out you get 18 and if you're gonna disrespect me if you're gonna come in here do whatever you want listen you know what you're gonna be living on your own I love you you will always be my child but you cannot live like this because I cannot put up with your kind of behavior and that's exactly what God the Father did with us when he comes and he says my spirit complains to me and says I cannot put up with their nasty behavior constantly and constantly apostle paul says exactly the same thing in in ephesians he says and do not bring sorrow to god's spirit by the way you live remember he has identified you as his own guaranteeing that you will be safe on the day of redemption do not bring sorrow to the holy spirit by the way you live as a christian who has the Holy Spirit you can either bring joy to the Holy Spirit or you can bring him sorrow by the way you live if you are married here you know what that means do not bring sorrow when your spouse by the way they live can bring you sorrow do not raise your hand do not say amen right now because they're sitting next to you 
but we all know what that means when you can bring sorrow to the person that you love the person that you live with by the things you do now if it happens once you apologize the relationship continues but if it never changes and you continue to inflict that person hurt that person with words and behavior very soon your spouse they won't divorce you they will just simply say please sleep on the couch or please you know get another place but I can't live with you like this we're gonna be married but we can't be together because you're bringing me too much sorrow that's exactly how it is with the Holy Spirit he is a person and you can bring him joy or you can bring him sorrow relationship with the Holy Spirit is a choice he lives in us by faith but to sense his presence to know his glory that is not just because he lives with us i'm going to give you just five levels of relationship with the holy spirit based on the relationship that jesus had with the holy spirit and if i can ask you unless um, for us to kind of sit and not walk back and forth if you have your notes write this down the first degree of our relationship with the holy spirit where all of us start is when we get born when we get born you can write down born again when we get born again we this is where our relationship with the Holy Spirit begins now actually the Holy Spirit is with us before we get born again to bring us to Jesus Christ but the relationship with him begins when we get born again just like Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit you and I when we get saved we get born by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit begins to live in us can somebody say amen so the Holy Spirit begins to live in us. One of the reasons Jesus lived a supernatural life was because he had a supernatural birth. When he came to Nicodemus and he said, Nicodemus told him, he says, Jesus, I've noticed that you are, um, you do incredible things. The, the miracles, amazing. The teachings, amazing. When you teach, demons come out. Awesome. And Jesus almost interrupts the whole thing and says, unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You're almost like, Jesus, didn't you just hear what she said? Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus the reason my life is so supernatural is because my birth was supernatural. See salvation is not getting a ticket to heaven when you die. Salvation is an entrance into a kingdom of God when you live. Salvation is when the Holy Spirit gives me a new birth to qualify me for a supernatural life salvation is not just a little insurance card in the glove box of my theological preferences when I die so in case there is heaven that I don't go into hell salvation Jesus says he says unless you're born of water which is physical birth and the spirit which is supernatural birth salvation he says you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven Jesus wasn't talking about heaven in heaven he was talking about the kingdom now that you and I can walk into your supernatural birth when you get saved is what opens the door for the supernatural life that you have with the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not model to us what God can do on earth. He modeled to us what a man submitted to the Holy Spirit can do on earth. Some people think well Jesus walked on water that was God. Well why did he say we can do what he did and more? We can't be God no matter how hard we humble ourselves submit ourselves to God we'll never be God but we can be like Jesus because he demonstrated on earth what a man like you and I who submits himself to the Holy Spirit can achieve on this earth when you get born again by the Holy Spirit this is where your relationship with the Holy Spirit begins number two is when we get filled with the Holy Spirit filled with the Holy Spirit is Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was water baptized and John the Baptist uh, baptized Jesus in the Jordan the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus we don't see Jesus actually speaking in tongues here but we see a Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus it's very interesting to see that Jesus was not filled in the Holy Spirit praying at home he was in a service where John the Baptist who had a smaller ministry than Jesus, who did not have miracles in his ministry, who was, um, who was Baptist. <laughs> that he was baptizing people, not saying Baptist, a denomination. And Jesus goes to, let me just say it to you plainly, it's like this, Jesus the charismatic, because he had miracles, he had the gifts, he goes into a service that was not like his service, that he's going to have, and the Holy Spirit touches him there. 
you know we must understand one thing for us to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit you have to learn to honor the people God uses even those you don't disagree you disagree with even those who may not be reaching the fullest potential in the kingdom of God Jesus didn't go to John and say hmm John your diet is bad you're eating locusts what kind of madness is that John your dress code is terrible you're dressed up like well, what is this Jesus didn't come to John and said John you don't heal people John you don't cast out demons John your ministry is not good enough see this is what most of us do and that's why the Holy Spirit cannot use us because we know what we're called to do and so we think that our job is to go put everybody down but Jesus comes to John and says, John uh, can you baptize me John says no 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 Jesus you you are greater are you so great I'm not even worthy to tie your shoelaces not even no I can't baptize you Jesus says I know John I know I'm greater you know you're greater high five that's good you need to baptize me wow wow most of us we would never do that we would come to John and say John I need to meet with you for coffee afterwards there's a lot of things you need to change <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having your ministry greater than John's but the Holy Spirit did not come on Jesus when he was praying the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus when he went to John and said John baptize me sometimes we get I get personally attacked because they say things like why are you following other ministers first of all I don't follow other ministers I follow Jesus but why do I listen to other ministers I always do listen to other ministers I preach I meet with other pastors in town who are not like us met this Friday with a wonderful pastor from New Vintage a few weeks ago from Bethel Church pastor C3 pastor who whose ministries are different than even where we are going to be you know I listen to podcasts read the books and people say why do you always do that and you encourage us to do that because there is a degree of the presence of the Holy Spirit that will not be available to you if you don't respect other people that God is using that's different than you if you're only able to listen and respect those that that just literally tickles your ear it's just like you you you're still with God but there is a limitation there see the spirit of Pharisees is this the spirit of Pharisees says I honor Moses Moses is the man of God Jesus don't understand him but oh God use me to be a prophet for tomorrow see when Moses was alive everybody hated him and no everybody started loving Moses when Moses died we love prophets that are dead kill the prophets that are alive and hope and wish to be prophets tomorrow we're all like that you come you come to church you say Catherine Kuhlman was a mighty woman of God Vlad Smith Wigglesworth was a mighty man of God except he was rejected from most charismatic churches because you know what Smith Wigglesworth did who raised 32 people from the dead he brought dead person on a stage and told them to walk <laughs> parents with kids ran and they said this is nonsense you know what Smith Wigglesworth did? He walked in the kitchen and people dropped on the floor by the power of God. And people said, this is crazy. This is not good. But when Smith Wigglesworth died, everybody said, Smith Wigglesworth, mighty man of God. We always do that. And so Jesus doesn't want us to be like that. He wants us to be like he was. He came to John and he didn't honor John when John was dead. He says, John, God is moving through you. Baptize me. Let's be students of the Holy Spirit, not scholars of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody shout amen. amen. The level three. When Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, level three is Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. After you get filled, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit begins to give you promptings. Now it's interesting, Jesus wasn't led by the Holy Spirit into a crusade or a service. He was led by the Holy Spirit to fast and to pray. When I was younger, I remember I even fasted and said, Lord, I want to hear your voice until God started to speak and I said Lord please a little bit less of your voice now don't speak to me as much because see when I thought is that when God will speak to me he will tell me which real estate to buy in Tri Cities which has gold mine I thought when he will speak to me he will right away point out at the age of 16 who my wife is gonna be 
I wanted God to tell me you know what is gonna be what I'm gonna do like in you know 15 years or 20 years down the road but when God started to speak to me he said Vlad could you apologize to your mom for not cleaning up your room for three days in a row and I said Lord no don't don't talk to me about this stuff talk to me about deep things of the spirit the mysteries of the kingdom of God that the whole counsel of God God says yes this is my counsel pick up a vacuum and vacuum that room that your mom be telling you to vacuum for so long I don't want to hear that about Lord it's not about hearing God it's about heeding God that makes all the difference amen and many times the Holy Spirit does not start speaking with this person needs to be healed this person needs to be healed he will start speaking to you about things that involve your self-denial you get on your knees you say Lord speak to me and he says you know what it's been six months for some it's been six years you haven't fasted you should start fasting so I'll rebuke this in Jesus name God speak to thy servant because thy servant heareth thee God leads sometimes starts leading you into wilderness before he leads you to a mountaintop and don't rebuke it and don't shut it down if it aligns with the Word of God it might be the Holy Spirit leading you and you need to be obedient to that amen, amen. the fourth step is when Jesus was in the wilderness he overcame Satan in the wilderness in Matthew and Luke chapter 4 verse 4 now you may say but Vlad there was Holy Spirit wasn't mentioned there uh, you're saying that the Holy Spirit how does that help me to know the Holy Spirit listen to this very carefully it will help you so much the Holy Spirit was not mentioned in the wilderness temptation of Jesus yet he was there why when you don't feel the Holy Spirit you have to stand on what the Holy Spirit said in his word that's where you find the Holy Spirit and that is how Jesus overcame Jesus overcame Satan and his hardest times is when you don't feel the Spirit you can find him in his word Jesus who felt the Holy Spirit come upon him Jesus who felt the Holy Spirit lead him into the wilderness and then he goes into the wilderness and there is no more mention of the Holy Spirit and Jesus doesn't get distracted and say God you left me he doesn't say Holy Spirit where is you where are you Holy Spirit help me the Bible says Jesus begins to quote the scriptures Holy Spirit wrote see God's Spirit will always lead you to a place that only his word will get you through God will never lead you God will not give you so much of his presence that makes you unnecessary to rely on the word of God the Holy Spirit wrote the Word of God and when you cannot feel Him in worship you find Him in the scriptures when you cannot feel Him during a sermon you find Him in the Word of God because He hides Himself in His Word when you don't see Him don't feel Him or don't experience Him in your wilderness and that is how you overcome can somebody shout Amen I cannot tell you how many times in my personal life I sense the leading of the Holy Spirit to give up for example uh, the, the account comes to my mind is last year when I gave a vehicle away it was the second vehicle within about four months and I felt so great I knew it was God leading me until the next day I recognized that I don't have money I had $150 left on my checkings account the second thing both of us didn't have cars me and my wife and uh, and I did not want to go and get it from a dealer on the payment so and I said great I'm just gonna call a few of my guys that I know who have dealerships and I'm gonna tell them that I have a problem hopefully God will speak to them like he spoke to me to give a car God will speak to them to give me a car <laughs> simple solution give and you receive I'm like I'm, I gave on Sunday I'm gonna get it back on Tuesday that's gonna be the fastest harvest ever received on this planet and I will experience that I called one guy on Monday I called another guy on Tuesday I called third guy on Wednesday they all wanted to sell me a particular car for about 45 to 60 thousand dollars I was like sorry somebody else is calling me I gotta go I was like 60 thousand dollars and this is where by Thursday I start getting depressed and I said Lord you didn't speak to me about giving a car why did I give a car in the first place my dad told me it was a stupid idea should have not done it should have listened to my father and I said God nobody's giving me a car and this is where I started to Holy Spirit that presence Lord that I felt when I decided that where is that presence 
and I got on my knees I turned on my favorite music and I started to create those same feelings and they were not there and for two weeks I'm not exaggerating two weeks after three o'clock I come home I laid in the bonus room over there and cried my eyes I said God where are you why did you forsake me and God didn't speak nothing the only way I got through that point is I realized God leads me what only what he says in his word will get me through I started to rely on the fact God will never forsake me I started to rely on the fact that God never promised to give me a car back and I didn't give it to get a car back I gave it because I felt leading of the spirit and I wanted to bless a people God started to deal with my motives and I came out of that and I said Lord now I'm gonna go find another way G gonna find a car and everything but I didn't do it to get a car God started to clean up with his word my motives and my things and eventually I have a car better than I had before my wife has a car better than what she had before but it's not about the cars it's about going through a season where only God's Word only God's Word begins to clean you up begins to change things inside and it's not gonna be what you feel it's what you feed on in that season that will get you through somebody shout amen are you with me so this the, the five number five is you get empowered by the Holy Spirit so after you go through some things and the Holy Spirit helps you with using his word he empowers you after Jesus came out of the wilderness we see that Jesus was empowered and the anointing of the Holy Spirit I'm not done yet so anointing of the Holy Spirit he started to touch the life of Jesus and Jesus started to minister with the power of the Holy Spirit now without the Holy Spirit's anointing Jesus wouldn't be able to accomplish anything that he accomplished in this world without the Holy Spirit you cannot fulfill your calling now Jesus's calling was to die for the world your calling is to raise up your family your calling is to be a good husband your calling is maybe a businessman maybe you're in this room today your calling is to raise your grandchildren your calling might be to to preach to lead a home group when I tell you something without the Holy Spirit you cannot fulfill your calling the way God wants it to be fulfilled when you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you put the Holy Spirit aside and says I don't have time for you I don't understand you're confusing you're kind of crazy and all the crazy people gonna talk about the Holy Spirit I want to stay I just want to believe there is a God don't know who Allah Buddha but there is one and I'm gonna stick with that and that's it but you say I don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit Saul one day did that he, he disobeyed the Holy Spirit by dishonoring his mentor and the Holy Spirit withdrew from him and something happened the Bible says demons started to attack him Brian I want you to turn off all the lights in this sanctuary including the lights on the top quickly one two and three all of them everywhere and the side lights as well have you noticed the moment the lights were turned off like in a split second actually the darkness came in anybody notice that mm -hmm. nobody invited the darkness I only asked them to turn off the lights I did not invite the darkness where did the darkness come from it's always been here huh absence of light created right away the darkness turn on the lights please You don't have to invite the darkness it will always come you only have to invite the light when you reject the light you invite the darkness that's how it works when we reject the Holy Spirit the darkness is always there when you say I don't want the Holy Spirit I don't have time for the Holy Spirit I ignore the Holy Spirit that's exactly what happens the light gets turned off the demons of pornography they quickly appear the demons of drinking they quickly appear all kinds of addictions of depression they quickly appear demonic is always there and it's waiting for you to switch off the, the switch that's why your relationship with the Holy Spirit is not a luxury for us it's not just well my life is good but the Holy Spirit will be greater this is life with the Holy Spirit and without it we are exposed to the darkness I am and so are you the best of us will see the worst in us when we reject the relationship with the presence of Jesus the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen I want you to quickly write down the three benefits of a relationship with the Holy Spirit benefit one is we have comfort 
when you have the Holy Spirit relationship, you will have comfort. The Bible says that when church was comforted in the Holy Spirit. It's interesting because the similar word comfort is used when uh, Isaac, he lost his mom, Sarah. And the scripture says that Rebecca came into the tent and Isaac was comforted. When he was intimate with Rebecca, it was comfort. He was comforted by that. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians, it says, The God of all comfort will comfort you in all of your trouble. That with the same comfort, you will comfort others who need comforting. The famous Psalm, Psalm 23, it says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Have you noticed there's two things God has? Rod and a staff. The rod is to drive away the wolves. And the staff is a shepherd always leans on his staff. See, the rod is the Word of God. The staff is the Spirit of God. The, the Word of God drives away the enemy. It corrects the sheep. But the staff is the Holy Spirit that Jesus leaned on on this earth and expects you to lean on in your own trouble and in your own difficulty for comfort. The Holy Spirit can bring no comfort to a person who doesn't lean on Him. Lean on the Holy Spirit. When you're going through a hard time, God didn't promise to provide explanation always. God promised to give you comfort. The way you find the comfort is the way a shepherd leans on the staff. That's what comforts me is when I lean on the Holy Spirit and I say, Holy Spirit, I don't understand some things. Holy Spirit, I don't feel good right now. I, I feel like I'm in this low shadow of valley of darkness and just attacked. But Holy Spirit, I lean on you right now. I depend on you right now. Help me to get through this, not to be defined by this time, but to overcome this time. And the Holy Spirit gives me comfort. How many of you experienced when you come during worship and you were anxious and you were kind of like things were over you and God didn't give you a written 25 page explanation of everything that was going on he just touched you and you left comforted and you left like you still went back to the same problems but you were no longer the same person and those problems were fixed like this how many you felt like an airplane where you where you come into the presence of Jesus maybe in your car maybe in your room and the Holy Spirit came into the room and you felt like you were getting higher and the problems were still the same size but in your mind they were getting smaller it's called the comfort of the Holy Spirit the second thing that comes when we intimacy have the intimacy of the Holy Spirit is wisdom it says David when Bathsheba and David committed adultery and the child was born and the child died the scripture says that David comforted Bathsheba and he went into her and she conceived. The same word is used in the book of Acts and the Holy Spirit comforted the church. It means there was a comfort of the Holy Spirit in the church. See Holy Spirit wants to comfort you. This is where the intimacy happens and as a result you give birth to wisdom. Knowledge is what you get in college. Wisdom is what you get in the Holy Spirit. Knowledge is what you get from a podcast. Wisdom is what you get from prayer. See, Joseph had, had a faith to get through the prison. Then Joseph had a gift from God to translate the dreams which got him out of the prison. But what made him a prime minister is that Joseph looked at Pharaoh and he says, listen, I just explained to you the dream, but let me give you a wisdom. With wisdom, you'll be able to save this much percentage, this much. And the Pharaoh says, you are hired as a vice, vice, vice principal, as a prime minister. You are hired as next to me because of wisdom. You cannot unlock your destiny without wisdom. You can get, you the, get through the trouble by faith. You can get through the trouble by the gifts and the skills that you have. But to really hit the bullseye of what God wants you to do, it will take wisdom. And wisdom does not come from a master's degree or a bachelor's degree. Those things are important and great. Wisdom comes from, what did Pharaoh say about Joseph? Who can I find who has the Spirit of God? Wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. Your education will get you to a certain level. Even your moral life will get you to a certain level. But it comes the Holy Spirit's wisdom that helps you to unlock certain doors that were locked. We see the same thing from the ten virgins. Five were foolish and five were wise. Have you noticed that the foolish virgins were still virgins? All ten had moral standards that qualified the moral qualifications. Five had wisdom. Five lacked 
that wisdom and we see quickly why because they had more oil and the other ones didn't have the oil oil is always symbolic of the Holy Spirit when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit it's good to be moral meaning it's good to be a virgin that you are living clean you don't smoke you don't drink you don't do these things you don't mistreat your wife you don't look at porn that that's virginity and that is very good but without the oil listen you're still limited it's not the morality that gets you a meeting with the king it's the oil of the Holy Spirit I believe when you meet with the Holy Spirit there has to be you have to walk out from that meeting with wisdom people who walk out from there only with comfort and say man I felt so good but listen if you're not gonna walk out with wisdom you're gonna find yourself in a similar problem week later man I'm in my debt to my eyeballs you know made so many financial mistakes but I come to the presence of God he lifts all my burden well you still gotta you still got payments and only the wisdom will help you to never make the same mistakes again and to make different decisions without the relationship with the Holy Spirit has to go deeper where you're not just experiencing relief of the problem but you're experiencing a change with how you do life and that comes from the Holy Spirit who gives wisdom don't just wait for an emotional high wait for a download of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit when you pray worship and seek his face can somebody shout amen and I want you to write down the last thing is growth relationship with the Holy Spirit the intimacy with the Holy Spirit produces growth in your life scripture says the church multiplied by the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit the book of Acts is a book of Acts of the Holy Spirit but it came as a result of the intimacy with the Holy Spirit and I can talk I still have many things that I can talk about on the person of the Holy Spirit but I want to sum it in this Holy Spirit is like a wind. Jesus compared him to the wind when he talked to Nicodemus. Wind is something you cannot see but something you can feel and something you can see its results. It's mysterious. Wind cannot be controlled. Wind can be stronger and weaker. Right now in Tri-Cities we have wind but a little bit different speed of that wind than in Caribbeans. You know unlike the hurricane that comes and destroys houses when the mighty violent the Bible says wind came in the book of Acts chapter 2 it didn't destroy anybody it saved thousands of people the wind it leaves people without homes but when the Holy Spirit comes people find a home the wind throws throws the trees where they break people and they kill people like we've seen over 10 000, over 10 people that were killed in Florida and the states where the Matthews came in but when the Holy Spirit comes people get healed people get restored the Holy Spirit produces results when He comes. A lot of people get turned off by the Holy Spirit for this reason. Because many Christians only limited the Holy Spirit to a feeling of relief of their problems. But their lives were never changed. So you come and you see them speaking in tongues three miles per hour, screeping until their veins are popping out. Worshipping, you know, dancing and everything. And you're looking five years. 10 years and you see you're fasting you're praying you're like your life is not changed you're experiencing God you're like I'm not stupid but if I bring a hurricane to your backyard your backyard cannot remain the same there has to be a change and the Holy Spirit wants to bring a change in your life not just a change in your tears and in your feelings but it starts there and it goes to wisdom and it goes to change and somebody say amen I want us today it's 12 o'clock right now it's a time to go home but I ask each one of you right now that you get honest with God and with yourself where are you when it comes to the Holy Spirit have you causing him sorrow have you ignored him have you pushed him away from your life have you allowed him to comfort you have you allowed him to give you wisdom because you're running around a foolish virgins you 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 you're proud with the fact that you're not doing anything stupid or you're better than your neighbor but you don't have oil you don't have wisdom that makes your life different and people who don't have the holy spirit have you allowed the holy spirit to bring change because you talk 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 but your life has no no fruit behind the talk the holy spirit wants to help you increase you 
strengthen you, but you have to give him the honor first. Acknowledge him. Welcome him.